Hello everyone, this is Coach Michelle coming to you live from Atlanta. I received the same question twice today. So the question is, do I need a home care license if I am providing the services myself? So the answer to that is no. However, let me elaborate a little. Let's just say client A and client B. If I'm providing services to client A and I'm providing services Monday through Friday, eight to five, no, I do not need to get a home care license. It doesn't matter if you're in a regulated state or a non-regulated state. I do not need a license because I'm an individual providing services to client A in his or her home. This is when it gets a little sticky, tricky, and some people actually violate the rules and regulations of their state. So say I, Michelle, receive a referral from client A. And client A says, hey, I have a friend, client B, that needs services. And I contact client B and she says, oh, thank you so much. Client A told me all about you. I'm really excited and I would love for you to provide services to me and help me with my, you know, bathing, like housekeeping, meal preparation, all those things that we cover under a home care license, right? So then you say, oh, I would love to help you. I'm so excited, blah, blah, blah. And then you say, well, what time and what days are you looking for? She said, oh, Monday through Friday, eight to five. Mm conflict because you're taking care of client A during those same times and the same days. So you say, this is where some people get in trouble. You say, oh, no problem. I know someone that can help you. If you refer your friend Tanya to client B and they negotiate and they work out and client B pays Tanya directly, then life is good. You don't have to have a license. She doesn't need a license. This is when some of you mess up and where I need to clarify. Same situation, client A refers client B to you. You meet with client B. She needs the same exact hours client A needs. And you say, yes, I can help you. And then you call, uh, contact Tanya and you say, hey, Tanya, I have a client of mine. I need you to go out and work. The client pays you directly. You get paid. $20 an hour, and then you pay the caregiver, Tanya, out of your money. The client is paying you, and you are sending someone to work. That's when you need a license if you're in a regulated state. That's when you have just violated the rules and regulations of that state. Anytime you are physically sending someone out, you're being paid, and you are sending someone out, you must have a license. And in some states that are regulated, that's even considered, even if you are not being paid, but if you are sending someone else out, that can be considered a referral, a registry, and a few other things. So you want to be very, very careful. So the key to success, if you want to grow and help multiple people simultaneously, keyword simultaneously, then you really should look into getting your home care license. So you are adhering to the rules and regulations of your state. And you want to also make sure you're protecting yourself and you have the right insurance to cover you, to cover your client, and to cover your employees when you are sending them out. Some states allow you to have individuals go out and provide services to clients for you as contractors. I don't recommend it, but some states allow that. And then some states have what we call a nurse registry. Same thing, you hire contractors, you send them out. I don't even like nurse registries, to be honest, because when you're telling someone when to go, what to do, how to dress, the services to provide, they're really your employee. There's more you can find out about that if you go to the irs.gov website. They have a clear, clear document on how to differentiate between contractor and employee. You also can look on the Department of Labor website. They have information on determining if someone is actually your employee. A contractor is when you don't tell them what to wear, where to go, what time you got to be there. What So like a nurse, for instance, most agencies will hire an independent contractor nurse, meaning you will simply tell the nurse, you know, what paperwork she needs to fill out, but you're not telling her how to fill it out. You 
would tell the nurse what client to go out to do an assessment, but you're not telling her when to go to the assessment. You're not telling the registered nurse what to wear to the assessment. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a painter, right? So when you hire a painter as a contractor in your home, you're not telling the contractor, I want you to use this type of brush. I want you to have this type of ladder. I want you to have wear these type of clothes. You're not telling the contractor. The contractor is telling you, I have availability next Tuesday to come out to paint your home. It's as simple as that. So make sure you understand what your rules and regulations are in your state. Make sure you understand what insurance you need, what licensing you need, all of those things to make sure that what you are doing is legal and you are operating within the scope of what the state allows, okay? So that's the answer, quick, short, to the point. And if you guys have any questions, jot down below in the comment section. I do personally respond to the comments on YouTube. So I would love to hear that, provide any feedback. If you guys want more information about how I can help you, you know, through our VIP hybrid coaching program or any other services that we offer, um, licensing assistance and things like that, then you can visit us online. And you can also find us on I am Coach Michelle on Instagram and all also on Facebook. Don't forget to click the bell so you can be notified each and every time I go live and or drop a new video. Take care. God bless guys. Love you.